good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday, everyone. So today we're going to wrap up our series on the circulatory system or the blood. Um, but before that, I wanted to chat with you real quick about one of the things that we're doing next weekend. I can't believe it's already next weekend. Oh my gosh, it's already the fifth. So um, on December the 16th, which is a Saturday. Now watch me get this wrong. Um, so 16, yep. Yeah. Okay, so we are doing a, another meal prepping course. And so I know a lot of you guys have shown interest in that. And it's something that you guys want to kind of become more routine in. And so that's why I'm offering the class. And so the class is 12 bucks for a full hour. And then you also get recipes. You'll get a layout of what we're going to be going over. And then you'll get to actually cook in the kitchen with me. And so I'll give you a shopping list. If you want to prep with me, you can totally do that in that hour. I hope to get a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner complete for you. So we will be wrapping things up with the meal prep course. So hence wrapping it up, we are going to be talking about different wraps that you can use to make your life a little bit easier, especially with meal prep. So if that is something that interests you, if you want to know what wraps are good and healthy and convenient and affordable, um, pros and cons of the different kinds, we'll be making one too. And so if this is something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments below and I can make sure that you get on the email list for that because I think a lot of you guys are showing interest, but I'm wondering if the emails that I'm sending out for those is something that is not filtering through to your inbox. Okay. So that is that. We'll wrap that topic up and move into the circulatory system. Okay. So last week we talked about the three different vessels or transportation mechanisms of the blood, right? Okay. So we talked about veins, arteries, and capillaries. Okay. We're going to be diving in a little bit deeper and how this is applicable to you is if you've ever gotten a scrape, if you've ever had to have your blood drawn, or if you've ever had a weakened immune system, there is going to be something um, that is specific to you about this in regards to the next few minutes as we talk about the functions of the blood. So we're going to go over the parts and the functions today. And so I think that this is always just very practical information. You know, when we have things done, we go through the, the systematic process of, you know, just being in the healthcare systems. A lot of times we don't realize why some things are the way they are or why our doctor might be doing what they're doing. And so that's kind of what I want to talk to you a little bit about. Okay. And so we all know that blood is important and without the blood flow of different things, blood flowing into different parts of your body that, you know, of course we would, you know, have a fatality. Okay. And so the human brain can only last about two minutes without blood or oxygen. And so it is imperative. These things constantly are like moving and flowing. Okay. And so we talked about the direction of that last week, but I want to talk to you more importantly about the function of blood. Okay. And so the first one is transportation. Of course, it's going to move oxygen in, it's going to move carbon dioxide out, but then it's also going to have a play in nutrients. And so if you were with me, when we talked about the stomach and the intestines, large and small, we talked about, you know, just the digestive system in general, those things are how the blood is able to break down the nutrients that are in those organs and communicate with it to be able to process them and push them out through the body. And so remember back, if you were with me, we talked about these little things called villa and they are like, like kind of look like mountain peaks like this. And they have little bitty follicles all around them. Okay. And with these, the nutrients that you get from your stomach that moves down into the small intestine, your small intestine is permeable. And so with that, it pushes those things out through the villa and into the blood. And that's how we get the nutrients that we need. Okay. So the first major function is transportation. The second major function is protection. Okay. And so white blood cells and platelets are going to have a major function in that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more when we go over the parts. And so hang tight, 
on that one, a little bit of a sp suspense on that one, and I'll come back to it. I'll circle back around, okay? Section, second major function of blood is protection, okay? Third major function is communication, okay? So through hormones and other chemical processes. So communication is key. So I would say that your blood and your organs are like BFFs, okay? So each of them have specific chemicals that they're pushing out and communicating into the blood that something needs to be transported in a different way. For example, let's say you had too much sugar. If you had too much sugar, basically your pancreas is crying and saying, oh my gosh, they had too much sugar and I'm trying to push out all of this insulin and what do I do? And the blood goes, oh, let me help you with that. I'll help transport that, right? Okay, the same thing happens, you know, if we happen to, you know, have something going on with toxins or we have something that we need to push out through the bladder, our blood is what allows that to happen. And so it is a wonderful, wonderful communicator. Okay. The next one is regulation. Okay. And so your body constantly always wants to be in homeostasis or a happy place. Okay. Your body, just like you, always wants to be in a happy place, okay? And one of the ways that it is able to constantly create a homeostasis is through being a thermostat, okay? And so, for example, when you are working out and you get very, very flushed and you're red, the reason why this happens is because the blood flows in closer to the surface of your skin to be able to be cooled off, Okay. And so your body is constantly creating this homeostasis. So whether it is helping out the organs, whether it is regulation in regards to temperature, it's constantly trying to make this balance occur. Okay. So constantly moving and shifting as much as we don't see these things happening, they are each and every day in every moment, every second. Right. Okay. So four functions of the blood, transportation, protection, communication, and regulation. Okay. So these are all great things to know, but what is actually in the blood? When we talk about its ability to do the things that it does, its parts show you how those things are accomplished. Okay. And so the first one is through plasma. So plasma is basically the liquid that is in the blood. This is the fluid that allows the blood to flow through the veins, the arteries, the capillaries, all of those different types of things. And so you might be going, well, all of blood is liquid, right? Well, actually, no, it's not quite that way. So plasma is actually straw colored and it is only becoming red because of red blood cells. Okay. And so when you are cut or when you are scraped and you see the blood that's coming out, you can know if it's oxygenated or deoxygenated based off of the color. So if it's really, really dark red, you know that it's deoxygenated. If it's that bright red, you know, it's oxygenated. Okay. And so I have a lot of people that will say, yeah, but like, um, our blood is blue, but then when it reaches the oxygen in the air, then it turns red. No, that's not really the case. So like your skin color kind of distorts it, um, but it is not actually like blue in your veins, okay? So it is either dark red or bright red based off of whether it has oxygen or not. And the thing that carries oxygen to it would be the red blood cells, okay? So red blood cells are only about seven micrometers thick, okay? So if you had one single strand of your hair and you could look at it and see how how thick or thin that is, it's usually around 80 micrometers. And so when you say that one strand is only, um, you know, 80 micrometers, when we talk about a red blood cell, it's only actually seven micrometers thick. And so these are very, very, very tiny things. Um, one drop of blood has hundreds of these red blood cells in it. Um, and speaking of hundreds of red blood cells, there are not near as many white blood cells as there are red blood cells. And so for every about 700 red blood cells, there is one white blood cell. Okay. There's actually five different types of white blood cells, but the main reason why we have white blood cells is to fight. Okay. So any of the germs, any of the, the particles that come in um, and through our lungs, or we get susceptible to in regards to breathing them in through our respiratory system, this is where the white blood cells come into play, okay? So a lot of times the white blood cells hang out in the alveoli, okay? So if you guys were with me with the respiratory system, we talked about that. We talked about your broccoli and your alveoli. You guys remember this? And so in those alveoli, so in those branches that are in your lungs, 
that's where they hang out because the first line of defense when you breathe in something is for them to attack them right there in the lungs, okay? And so these are going to be increased if you are sick. So if you have a weakened immune system, if you are fighting something, this is going to be increased. You're going to have more white blood cells. This is also one of the reasons why you get your blood drawn. Um, if you have an increased white blood cell count, you know that your body is fighting something. Okay. And so a lot of times if you're feeling really weak, achy, different things of that nature, your, your doctor, of course, will look at a lot of your hormones in your blood too. But one of the things that they're also looking at is your white blood cell count. Okay. Um, so white blood cells also um, interconnect with platelets. And so platelets are not actual cells, but they're fragments of large cells that are in your red bone marrow. So blood is actually made in your bones. And so it's made in that red blood, um, in that red bone marrow. And so these little fragments are what become clotting agencies for when you get cut. Okay. And so if you want to know what a platelet looks like, per se, you know, you can look at a scab or, or a scrape that's kind of starting to heal, but that coagulation is actually happening because of little cell fragments that are coming together to allow the clotting agency to occur. Okay. And so there you have it. There you have it in regards to your four functions of the blood and then your parts of the blood as well. So know that these are things that you can utilize and you have a little bit of that information next time that you go in for a blood draw, next time that you get cut, you can think about these things in a way that the Lord is amazing in how he designed us. And so these things don't just happen. These things don't just occur. Um, we were created so perfectly that he designed us to be so efficient with our bodies if we can take care of them. And so if you have any questions about blood, if you have any questions about the meal prepping course, let me know in the comments below and I will chat with you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.